Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. You know, um, in studying the scriptures and learning of God, because it says, come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest, aid. Learn of me, take my yoke and learn of me. So I found out something about God that no man in this life has any excuse and no reason to fail or whatsoever. We say breakthroughs don't just happen. There is a series of opportunities seized And disasters don't just happen. There is a series of opportunities missed. When you look at the conversation between Jesus, James and John and their mother, and she went to the Lord and said, Lord, grant that these my two sons will sit one at your right hand and one at your left in the regeneration. Jesus answered and said, wow, I don't think you have an idea of what you just asked. So what you just asked is beyond me to give. It's only my father that can give it. Meaning, that request is big. Or too big for you. Then he gave an analogy of how big that request was. Then he said to them, are you able to drink from the cup that I drink and be baptized with my baptism? Meaning, what you just asked is as big as this. Then they said, we are able. Then he said, you shall. And it dawned on me. That there is nothing you cannot achieve with God. There is no height you cannot cross. There is nothing you cannot attain. If only you can believe. All things are possible. To him that what? Believeth. So if it's not working, I ask, what do you believe? What's in your belief system? Mark 4, I'm not sure if I want to read everything because it's a long reading. And um, Jesus said concerning Mark 4, if you do not understand this parable, then you cannot understand all parables. Meaning, is the granddaddy of all parables. Also mean... If you understand this parable, you will understand the working mechanism of the kingdom of God. And once you understand it, once you understand it, now it's there for everyone to learn. God didn't hide it in heaven. He put it in a book. He said, go and learn it. If you can learn it, you'll be just like me. Then they say, to God, nothing shall be impossible. Then they say, all things are possible to him, not to God. To him that believeth. So they've made it clear. If you can understand it, there's nothing God does you cannot achieve. There's nothing God accomplishes you cannot accomplish. So it's a vast terrain. It's how far you can go. Like they told Abraham, lift up your eyes and see how far you can go. So When you hear people say, a witch from the village, you look at them as reprobate Christians, degenerates. I find that it's one of the things that irritate me most in this life. I remember once my mom said, you know what, Kay? I said, yes, mom. I said, I think the witches have left their covers. They're looking for money. I said, there's so much involved looking for money. They don't have time for anybody. <laughs> in this parable, this morning we're looking at deceitfulness of riches. Jesus listed how men make it in life. 
Then he listed how men fail in life. He listed five things that makes men fail. Five things. Of the five things, Satan is one. Of the five things. In Mark 4, I guess I just have to read it. Because it's the basis of my teaching, so I have to read it. I just have to read it. I wish I could do without reading it, but I have to read it. <laughs> I guess I don't really like much reading, right? I like studying, not reading. But you have to read. Uh, Say, so give attention to reading. It's a benefit of reading is different from studying. The study to show thyself. A workman that needed not be ashamed, approved of God, rightly dividing the word of truth. So when you study, you rightly divide the word of truth. When you read, you store the word. When you meditate, you bring out the life of the word. When you confess, you build faith to implement the word. Four things you confess, you read, you meditate, and you study. We're not looking at that this morning. It's quiet. It's a bit quiet. And uh, I guess I, I, I'm talking about deceitfulness of riches. That's, we're talking about money. I guess that should excite you a little bit, right? If you ask almost everybody, what do you think is your greatest challenge? Is it money? If I had 90% will raise their hand. If only I just have just 6.2 million. Oh, but the problem is to solve. Ah, six years, just one million too. And that's what you hear everywhere, right? And everybody believes that money will solve their problems, right? Praise the Lord. You didn't say amen. What if God just said, take the six million and give it to you? Everybody believes money will solve the problem, right? You still didn't say amen to that. <laughs> amen. Mark 4 from verse 1, he began to teach by the seaside. There was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship. Actually, this is just an introduction. And sat in the sea, the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. He taught them many things by parables, said unto them in his doctrine. Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. It came to pass as he sowed. Some fell by the wayside, the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Some fell on stony ground where he had not much earth. Immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. That's another failure. Some fell among thorns. The thorns grew up, choked it, and yielded no fruit. That's another failure. Others fell on good ground. Some yielded fruit that sprang up and increased, brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundred. Then he said to them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Say, I have ears to hear. And I, and I hear. I have ears to hear. I to hear. And, I hear. and I hear. In Isaiah 50, it says, shall give you the ears of the learned. Say, I have the ears of the learned. And I hear what the Holy Spirit Holy is Spirit. saying unto me. Verse 11. Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. So this is the mystery of the kingdom. On these lies, the entire work mechanism and the operations of the kingdom of God. Nothing more outside this. Say after me. Say, unto me, it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. That seeing I see, and I perceive, and hearing I hear, and I understand. Amen. Verse 13, he said to them, Know ye not this parable? How then will you know all persons? So whoever does not know this parable has not started the Christian walk. He has not begun. You must know this parable to understand what Christianity is all about. Because without this parable, you cannot know any other parable. Then in verse 14, he said, The sower soweth the word, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they've heard, Satan cometh immediately, take away the word that was sown in their heart. So some people don't make it in life. Because of Satan. That's number one. Number two. These are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. Who when they have heard the word immediately. Receive it with gladness. They have no root in themselves. So endure but for a time. Afterward when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake. Immediately they are offended. So another set of people that don't make it in life. Is because of persecution. Though the Bible says. That persecuted, persecution works against them. Because they lack understanding. Third one, 
These are they which are sown among thorns, which they hear the word, the cares of this world. That's the third thing that stops people from making it in life. The cares of this world. The deceitfulness of riches. Deceitful, that's number four. And the lust of all the things choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. So there are five things that stop people in this life from making it. Satan is one of them. Persecution or lack of understanding of the word is number two. Cares of this world is number three. Deceitfulness of riches is number four. And the lust of other things, number five. Now, this one we're looking at, deceitfulness of riches, which is one of the parameters that stop people in life from making it. You know, um, when you want to talk about riches, it's vast, quite vast. Um, there are one or two things you need to know. There are quite a lot of things you need to know, but in line with the short time we have to go through this, there are one or two things I want you to know, which is very important. It helps you to understand some basic things. For example, when you go to certain countries, there are some basic things you must know. You don't need to know everything. If you go to the United States, for example, they can't tell you everything about the United States, but they tell you if you drive and you see a flash a park, they tell you when you park, don't put your hand down. It could cost your life. They're not going to tell you everything. They say, but that's very crucial. Just put your hand on the steering. Let the officers see it. Or like Nigeria, they say, oh, see. <laughs> you try that over there, it could cost your life. So there's some basic things you need to know. Not everything, which is what I just want to bring out this morning. Just some basics. Number one. God owns everything in this life. The oil wells, the telecom industries, the dollars, the naira, the pounds, the sterling. Psalm 24 says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein including your jewelry, your earring, your car you just brought out there or is owned by God. You are on lease of everything in your care. It's hard. But I'll give you two more scriptures. Psalm 50 from verse 7. It's quiet. Don't worry. We're talking for um, the seafulness of riches. So obviously by the time we're done, you're supposed to make more money. Aren't you? If we teach you right, you should make more money, right? Praise God. In third John, he said, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. So the first wish and desire of God after salvation is that you prosper. So if the sinfulness of teach riches is properly thought, you, you find out that you make money. You make money and you'll be happy, right? And everybody will be happy. Family will be happy. The boys will be happy. Some pastors will be happy. <laughs> Psalm 50. It looks look quite serious for me. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. I'll read from verse 7. Or let me just jump to verse 10. For every beast of the forest is mine. A cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the fountain, the wild beasts of the field, they are mine. In Haggai chapter 2, Haggai chapter 2, I read verse 6 to 8, it says, For thus says the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, I will shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land, I will shake all nations. The desire of all nations shall come, and I'll fill this house with glory, said the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. So, you must understand that everything belongs to him. So, you're a steward, you're a caretaker, and everything you have is on lease. Like, they don't do much of that in Nigeria, they still do it. But it's much more predominant in the Western nations buy so many things on lease. And until you're finished paying, 
is not really yours. And you cannot fully pay. So you live on lease. Praise God. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. That's number one I want you to take note of. Number two, it is God who gives you power to make wealth. God is behind all riches, all wealth, and all prosperity. Sorry, let me not put all. All legal, legitimate prosperity, God is behind it. And he's the one that does what? That gives you the power to make wealth. Deuteronomy 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. I read from verse 17 to 18. You should say in your heart, my power and my might and the might of my hand has gotten me this wealth. But you should remember the Lord your God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to thy fathers as it is this day. You know, while we're looking at this, is one of the things that make people fail in life is deceitfulness of riches. Now, if we look at common English, deceitfulness means wrong teaching on riches. So wrong teaching on riches, wrong concept or wrong beliefs about money can make a man fail in life. That's what the Bible says. And so we have to lay foundation to make you understand some basic things about riches and about wealth. Amen? In Proverbs 14, 23, it says that in all labor, there is profit. In all labor, there is profit. Proverbs 14, 23. Is it up? Now, in Isaiah 48, 17, I'm trying to show you something again. I'm going somewhere. <laughs> I'm going somewhere. In Isaiah 48, 17, now, in all labor, that means good labor leads to profit, right? Genuine labor leads to profit. Now, God now says in Isaiah 48, 17, Thus said the Lord, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, and the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which lead thee by the way. So, that labor is controlled by God. Are you seeing it? He said, in all labor there is profit. He said, I'm the Lord that teach you to profit. So, that krakra is God. Now you may understand what happened in Luke 12. You see, rich, the rich fool in Luke 12, a man made so much money. And God said, for not acting right based on money, your soul is going tonight. So wrong oppression of money can cost a man's life. You know, a man can ransom his life with riches. So that's how important money is. The Bible says you cannot serve God and mammon. Jesus likened spirit, money, the spirit behind money, to a deity. And says you cannot serve God and mammon. Satan is not contending with God. That's an insult. Money is contending with God. Because God says, I can give you this money. To says, I can give you this. God says, I will bless you with a home. Money to says, I can buy a home. God says, I can bless you with a car. Money to says, I can buy a car. So, Money is rivaling God. It's like a second wife trying to prove to God I'm better than you. So it's a contender with God. And so managing money is crucial. It could mean not worshiping God and it could incur God's wrath. And that's why they say it's the seedfulness of riches can stop a man from making it. God wants you to be super rich. Let me make you smile. Let's hope that will bring a smile on your face. God wants you to be super rich. You say they already know, so they're not even smiling. 
what they're saying is, I want to be, I, I, I know God wants me to be super rich. I want to be super rich, right? Right? Amen. Amen. In Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 24, this is why we have to study this issue. This is crucial. 2.24 says, there's nothing better for a man that he should eat and drink and that he should make his soul to enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw that it was from the hand of God. Meaning, God says, after you work and made profit, it's not your right to enjoy it. It's my prerogative to decide whether you will enjoy it or not. Now, when you understand God, I mean, it's sheer wickedness. When a man works so hard and you deny him access to eat from the labor, God is not wicked. God is good. But he said it is his prerogative to whether to decide whether a man will eat of it or not. Then there must be parameters he's using. Because those who just can't say, you, you will eat. You, you will eat. I like this man's face. No, no, there are parameters. And the way you understand that the enduring riches comes from God. You know, I believe very strongly in that Mark 10. That man that went to Jesus and said, Lord, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, you know what is written in the law? Don't steal, don't kill, don't commit adultery. He said, all this I've observed from my youth. What do I yet like? He said, sell all you have. Give to the poor. Come and follow me. Then he went away poor, uh, sorrowful for he had great possession. I personally believe he got his possession fraudulently. If he got it by God, they will not ask him to drop everything. You know, I can't forget this story about this young man. Let me digress a bit. He came to meet me. He said, sir, I'm not fulfilled. I feel I'm not moving forward. I've reached Padamira. I'm blocked. I want to move forward. What do I need to do to move forward? I looked at him. He was in part one university, I think Lagos State University, a computer student. I said, you will quit university. I believe in education. <laughs> you see the face on your, look on your face. I said, you will leave the university and go back and write jam again. What? Two pastors, they said, I can't work with you. You don't believe in education. They took their bags and they left the church. Two other people say, you don't believe. I said, I believe in education. I didn't say you should quit education. I said, quit the university and go back and write jam. They say, you ask a man in part one that just entered to leave and go back and write jam. Say, we can't work with you. There's something wrong with you. And about four, five, six of them left the church. I said, that's what you need to do to move forward. Three days later, he came to meet me. I said, you came to see me. <laughs> He said, I came to see you, man of God. He said, you call me man. He said, you are the only man of God. He said, those men are not men of God. I said, why? I said, those assistant pastors. He said, those men, they are not men of God. You are a man of God. I said, why did you say that? He said, because I never wrote jam. I gave money to a man to put smacks for me. He said, you didn't ask me to go and rewrite Waik. I wrote my Waik and I passed. But I never wrote jam. I gave money to somebody to put a mark for me. And it's only between me and that man, nobody. So for you to pick it, that must be God. You're asking me to redress a wrong. I quit. God. God said, if you don't quit, you will move forward again. You are stuck and that's where you'll be for the rest of your life. You can't move again. You have to address that wrong. And now I know you are a man. So for the Lord to ask that man to surrender all his wealth, something is wrong the way he got it. If he was right, he would never ask him to surrender. Never. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> You're quiet. You're quiet. I hope you didn't do that. <laughs> let this man not come and pick it one day. <laughs> oh, God, let me have body. You know, almost everybody has one skeleton or the other. Ouch. Oh, this man is losing up all his skeletons. Let me avoid you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Ecclesiastes 3.13. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 13. 
And he says, Also, that a man should eat and drink, enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. It's not a right. Ecclesiastes 5. 18. Behold that which I have seen. It is good and comely for one to eat and drink, to enjoy the good of all his labor, that he taketh under the sun all the days of his life, which God giveth him, for it is his portion. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 2. A man to whom God had given riches, wealth and honor, so that he lacks nothing in life for his soul of all that he desires. Yet God does not give him power to eat from it, but a stranger eats it. This is vanity. It's an evil disease. So God can deny man right to eat from it, which is what happened to the rich fool in Luke 12. Ecclesiastes 8.15. I'm giving you a lot of scriptures so that you can know that um, I didn't conjure that up. Amen. Amen. Then I commended Mary because a man had no better thing under the heaven than to eat and drink to be merry, but that shall abide with him of all of his labor all the days of his life, which God giveth him under the sun. Finally, Ecclesiastes 9, verse 7. Go your way. Eat your bread with joy. Drink your wine with a merry heart. Why? God has accepted your works. So what it means, if he does not accept your works, he will deny it. So if you run people over, steal the money meant for their development, and you say you are rich, God will deny him access to it from it. But if you walk diligently with your hands, and God prospers the work of your hand, he will make you eat from it. So it's not... Why? He said God has accepted the work. That's why he's allowing him to eat. The work of your hands. Your work, your hands are clean. You didn't loot treasury. Money meant for people's health. You didn't divert it. See, many of them, cancer, they've not started. They've not seen anything yet. <laughs> they will return all the loot. <laughs> That's the only way they will get well. Say, God has what? Accepted the work of your hands. So, eat drink and make what? Merry. So it's not a blanket thing that it just comes and says, you won't eat. You will eat. You must understand God. God oppressed by parameters and principles. He oppressed by parameters and principles. So if he accepts your work, he will make you eat the work of your hand. If he does not accept your work, he will deny that man. He peep it to heaven. He will not eat from it. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information or how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it, and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again, same time next week, I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working, and it will work in your life. God bless you.